Welcome to part one of a five-part series of videos entitled A Guide to Switching to Linux Pop! OS Edition. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction to Pop! OS, as well as installing it on a dual boot with Windows. So, what is Pop! OS? Well, Pop! OS is a Linux distribution, but specifically, it's a Linux distribution that's based on Ubuntu, that is meant to cater to gamers out of the box. It actually has dedicated downloads for Intel and AMD graphics cards, as well as for people using NVIDIA graphics cards. While it doesn't have Steam pre-installed, it can easily be installed with just a couple clicks from the Pop Shop. And I'll go over that in part three of this series when I cover installing software. But anyway, let's get to installing Pop! OS. So now you are gonna need a few prerequisites before you can begin. First of all, you're gonna need a computer obviously. And second, you're going to need a flash drive that has at least four gigabytes of storage. An internet connection will be helpful not only to download the ISO, but also in the installation process. Hopefully you have that if you're watching this video. If you already have Windows installed as your daily driver, which I imagine is the case for the vast majority of you watching this video, then I will say that installing Pop! OS on a dual boot with Windows is pretty cumbersome. There's no install alongside option in the installer like you'd have with vanilla Ubuntu or Linux Mint, for example. Now, the vast majority of the surprisingly very few tutorials covering how to install Pop! OS on a dual boot with Windows actually suggest installing Pop! OS first and then installing Windows. And I do think that that is the easier method if you can do that. However, in this tutorial, I'm going to be assuming the worst case scenario, which is that you have Windows already installed, or more likely you have it installed by the manufacturer for you without planning for Pop! OS. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first thing you're going to do is open up your web browser and go to pop.system76.com. And by the way, I'll have all the links in the description. But anyway, now you're gonna click download. Okay, and if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're gonna get the NVIDIA download. Otherwise, just go with the regular one. And by the way, if there's a non-LTS version here, I'd recommend going with the LTS version since better supported, both by the distribution and the community, and they also tend to be more stable. Now, if you're not sure whether you have an NVIDIA card, just go into your task manager and then click on more details here, and then go to the performance tab, and then find a section entitled GPU. If that shows up as being an NVIDIA card, then go with the NVIDIA download. If it's an AMD card or there's no GPU option at all, which in my case there's not, then you just go with the regular download. But anyway, I've actually already got this file downloaded. So the second thing you're gonna need to download is go to etcher.io, and then you're gonna download Etcher. I would actually recommend getting the portable version just to save yourself having to install it. But anyway, again, I've already downloaded that file. So what you're gonna do is open up Belina Etcher, and now would actually be a good time to get your flash drive plugged in that you're gonna be using as your Pop! OS install media. And I would actually check it to make sure that there's nothing on it that you need because it will be erased. But anyway, you're gonna wait for that to open. It does actually take a little while, so be patient. Once it's open, all you have to do is select your ISO file, either click flash from file, or you can even just drag and drop it in here. And of course, we're using our Pop! OS ISO, and then click select target, and then you're gonna select your USB flash drive. And by the way, I'd recommend to avoid confusion, having the flash drive that you're gonna use as your Pop! OS install media be the only flash drive plugged into your system. But anyway, we're gonna select that, and then we're gonna click flash. If user account control prompts you, you're going to click yes, and then it'll go ahead and start flashing the Pop! OS ISO to your flash drive. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Alright, and then once your flash is complete, all you have to do is close out of Blina Etcher, reboot your Windows system, and then before we go boot from our flash drive, we got to get into our BIOS settings real quick. So 
Once the post screen comes up, which is generally your PC or motherboard manufacturer's logo, mash your BIOS key repeatedly. If you're unsure of what that is, it's different for every model of computer or motherboard out there, so look it up for your particular model of PC or motherboard, depending on whether you have a pre-built PC or a custom-built one. In fact, I would actually say start matching it once the restarting screen disappears. Okay, so now you're gonna locate the secure boot settings, which that's gonna be different for every BIOS, but it's generally under the boot or security tab. And then you wanna make sure that secure boot is disabled. If it is, great, no need to do anything else, just get into your boot menu. Same principle by mashing your boot menu key when the post screen comes up. And again, if you're not sure what that is, just look that up. If it's enabled, then obviously you're gonna need to disable it, or else you'll get a fun cryptic error message when you try to boot your Pop! OS installation media. But anyway, now, once you're at your boot menu, you're gonna boot from your Pop! OS installation media, and then hit enter on try or install Pop! OS. All right, so now once the Pop! OS installation media is booted, we'll be presented with the install Pop! OS screen. So we're gonna select our language, keyboard layout, and we can type here to test our keyboard layout. All right, now here is where we get to the most important, but also most complicated part, particularly if we're installing it on dual boot. And by the way, if you're just wanting to wipe the whole drive and do a clean install of Pop! OS, all you have to do is just select clean install, follow the on-screen prompts, and it's actually pretty easy. But in our case, since we want to keep our Windows installation, we have to click Custom Advanced. And now we're presented with our internal drive partitions. So what we're going to do here is click Modify Partitions, and then that'll bring us into Gparted. And by the way, I'm demonstrating this on a system with a UEFI BIOS. If you have an EFI system partition, then you have a UEFI BIOS. If you don't, then you have a legacy BIOS, at least in general. But anyway, you see that little warning sign here? If we right click on our EFI system partition, then click information, it actually says we need these two packages, DOSFS tools and mTools. Now we already have DOSFS tools, but we need to install mTools by going into our terminal and just typing sudo apt install mTools, and by the way, I'll have that command in the description. Let that run through. It's actually pretty quick, assuming of course you have an internet connection, otherwise you'll have difficulty with that. Again, I'm assuming most of you have that, but anyway, once you've done that, you're gonna need to close out of Gparted, if you haven't already, and then open it again to get it to refresh. And there you go, that warning thing is gone. And by the way, don't worry about that warning thing at the Microsoft Reserve Partition, because we're not gonna be touching that at all, aside from moving it out of the way to create another EFI system partition. And I'll go over why we need to do that shortly. But what I'm gonna do here is go to our basic data partition, which is our Windows partition. You can see it's the biggest partition here. I'm gonna resize slash move that, and I'm actually gonna add 512 megabytes preceding that, and I'll go over why in a second. It sounds kind of ridiculous right now, but it'll make perfect sense once you understand why I'm doing this. And then free space following, this is where we allocate how much space we want to give to our Pop! OS. In my case, I want to do about half and half, so I'm going to do 40,000 megabytes. Or actually, I would allocate your free space following first and then allocate your free space proceeding. And don't worry about your free space following shrinking a bit. That's actually pretty negligible. But anyway, I'm gonna click resize slash move and then click okay here. And now what I'm gonna do is move this Microsoft Reserve partition to the right by dragging this from the left all the way to the right, then click resize slash move. And now with this 512 megabyte unallocated space, I'm actually gonna create a new EFI system partition format that with FAT32. And the reason why you have to do that is because the 100 megabyte EFI system partition that Windows creates for itself is actually too small for Pop! OS. So we need to create another EFI system partition for Pop! OS and then move the contents of the Windows EFI system partition over to Pop! OS's EFI system partition, if that makes sense. But anyway, now with that big unallocated space we created for Pop! OS installation, we're gonna create a new partition, this time formatting it with EXT4 for Pop! OS. And now, once you're done all that, 
Your partition table should look something like this. We've got our two EFI system partitions, Microsoft Reserve partition, Windows partition, Pop OS partition, and whatever this partition is for. But anyway, it looks good, so we're gonna click this little check mark, and you have to do that, otherwise your changes won't actually apply. But anyway, we're gonna click apply, and then let it do its thing. So now this will actually take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, now once it says all operations successfully completed, we're gonna close out of this, let it refresh, just to make sure that it applied the configuration that we wanted. Yes, it did. So now we can close out of Gparted. And now we have to find our blank EFI system partition that we just created, which in our case is dev sda5, right here. It's probably gonna be the second small one. So we're gonna use that partition as our boot partition or slash boot slash EFI. And we don't need to format it since that's already been done by Gparted. And then for our second big partition, dev sda6 that we just created that's our ext4 partition we're going to use that partition as our root partition and again we don't need to format that since that's already been done by gparted and our file system should be ext4 and then once we're done here now we just have to erase and install and by the way if you were doing this on a system with a legacy bios which if you don't have an EFI system partition, then probably means you have a legacy BIOS. In that case, things will be much easier for you because all you have to do is just create your Pop OS partition because all you have to do is just resize your Windows partition to make space for your Pop OS partition and then create your Pop OS partition. And obviously you wouldn't designate your Pop OS EFI system partition since you have no EFI system partition because that's not the way it works on systems with legacy BIOSes. But anyway, we're gonna create our user account here. I prefer to have just Drew as my username and then we're gonna pick our password and then click next. And now it's gonna go install Install Pop OS. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, once Pop OS is finished installing, we're gonna restart and it just boot us into our Pop OS installation without giving us the option to boot into Windows. Now, don't panic, your Windows is still there. We just have to do a little bit of extra configuration to be able to boot into it. And if you have a UEFI BIOS, you could probably also access it from your boot menu, but I'll show you how to make it so that way the option to either boot into Pop OS or Windows shows every time you boot up your system. But anyway, first I'm gonna just log in real quick. And then first time you log into Pop OS, you'll be greeted with this Welcome to Pop OS screen where you can set some preferences. I'm gonna click next, next, next. And it also gives you a bit of a tour of the Pop OS desktop and allows us to choose our system theme. Next. And now here's where we can set our time zone. I am in the Toronto time zone. So let's go with that. And now my clock up here is accurate. And here we can connect our online accounts. I'm just gonna skip that and start using Pop OS. All right, so now let's tackle that boot menu thing. So first of all, I'm gonna go into disks and then I'm gonna mount my Windows EFI system partition and then click on the mount point link and then I'm gonna go to EFI, then copy this Microsoft folder by hitting Control C and then I'm gonna go to other locations, computer, boot, EFI, and then I have to authenticate real quick by punching in my password, twice actually. And then that'll bring us into our Pop OS EFI system partition. So now don't worry about these other two folders here. We're only concerned about the EFI folder. All you have to do is just paste our Microsoft folder into that, let it copy over, there you go. Now we can go reboot our system. And then we just gotta mash our spacebar a bunch of times, keep mashing it until we get to this screen where you can choose either Pop OS or Windows Boot Manager. And by the way, if you didn't do those steps of copying the Microsoft folder over to your Pop OS EFI system partition, it wouldn't give you the Windows Boot Manager option. So what we're gonna do, so the screen shows up every time we boot up our system, is I'm gonna hit T to set our timeout. It'll keep increasing by one second 
every time I hit it. And if you want to decrease your timeout, all you have to do is just hold down the shift key while hitting T, and then it'll decrease by one second every time you hit it. I would say 10 seconds is a good time. And then we can select default boot entry by pressing D. If you want it to default to Windows, you can also clear it again by pressing D on your default boot entry. But anyway, we are done. And by the way, if you're on a system with a legacy BIOS and you want your Windows to show up as a boot option every time the system boots, you're gonna have to go into terminal and run a few commands. The first of which is sudo apt install os-prober punch in your password, and then we'll go install the OS Prober package. All right, and then you're gonna run sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub, and then you're gonna go to the bottom of the file, then get into caps log, and then type grub underscore disable underscore OS underscore Prober equals then disable caps lock, and then type false. Then hit control X, Y, enter. And now you're gonna run sudo update dash grub and then it should detect your windows and then add that to the grub menu and by the way if you didn't do those last two steps then it wouldn't detect your windows and add it to the boot menu so if windows is not being detected and added to your boot menu just make sure you've done these last two steps but anyway now we can reboot and see that yes now we have the option to boot into either pop os or windows 10 and in this case the timeout is set for you so no need to do anything else and that's how to install Pop! OS on a dual boot with Windows. I hope this video has given you some very useful information and got you interested in trying out Linux for yourself. If it did, be sure to hit the thumbs up and share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.